Hey guys, I'm Jan of Vacation, and today we can finally show off some Total War Warhammer 3 footage, which uh, I'm pretty happy about. We can play Miao Ying, um, but before we get into all her details, uh, we've got to set up the campaign. We've got to set it up, right? Story-wise, and also, um, uh, otherwise? Anyway, there's a cutscene. That's what I'm getting at. Let's watch it. This world has been sundered by a tide of arcane energy. The winds of magic churned into a maelstrom. The Tome of Fate drew me north to find out why. It guided me to a distant fortress steeped in blood. A battle was fought there. Though long over, the spirit still lingered. In the shadow of a broken portal, the trail ended. It was here the tome conversed with the dead. They told of Urson, the bear god of Kislev, lost in darkness. A noble prince ventured to save him, yet he strayed from the path and was corrupted by chaos. Savior became executioner. A single shot bound in faith forsaken pierced Urson's heart. And so the bear god roared. The tide that broke the world. Spirits, where lies Urson now? Is he here in the north? Is he alive? Wounded and dying. Impressed in shadow. What shadow? A demon's? A master of the dark. I knew who shackled the bear. Bellacor. Only a fool would challenge Belagor. And yet, the power of a dying god, there is no greater prize. A mere drop of Urson's blood would break my curse, ending my servitude to this accursed book. Free to profit from its secrets. But Urson is locked in the Forge of Souls, deep in the realm of chaos, and I cannot enter this nightmarish domain. All roots have been sealed by the Maelstrom. There must be a way. Ah, the tome unveils a spell to summon a portal. One to bypass the Maelstrom and create a door into chaos. Knowledge to bargain, for I need an ally. One who is tempted by the power of the god bear and can withstand the horrors within. And so we're going to be playing Grand Cathay in the Realm of Chaos campaign. So, the winds of magic royal stirred into the tempest by the roar of a dying god. Now demon and mortal alike must break through the eldritch storm and enter the Realm of Chaos in search of the ultimate prize. Will the demonic lords of change claim, uh, sorry, of chaos claim victory and find favour with their dark masters? Or shall the denizens of the world, scarred by constant war, endure the trials and temptations of the Chaos Realm? Their choice is yours. Grand Cathay. Past the mountains of Morn and steps beyond lies the fabled Empire of Cathay. Travellers returning from the eastern reaches tell tales of jade cities and golden pagodas. They recount strange creatures from serpentine dragons to monolithic stone sentinels and flying sky junks that rain multi-hued firepower from up above. But most of all, they tell of the imposing and disciplined armies that march forth in defence of their kingdom. The thousands of devoted foot soldiers Unswerve, uh, unswerving in their loyalty and unrivaled in the harmonics of war. That their armies face northwards to garrison the Great Bastion and defend it against the Runer's powers is perhaps a blessing. 
For should the Celestial Dragon Emperor have to turn his legions towards the nations of the West, the threat to all that may be unleashed, uh, the threat to all that may be unleashed does not bear thinking about. Well, all right then. So uh, we will obviously look into these uh, mechanics in the campaign. So um, we won't go over them now. So Miao Yin, the Storm Dragon, reigns across northern Cathay and commands the armies of the Great Bastion. Cold and aloof, she has ruled over the northern provinces for centuries and maintains their defences with strength of arms and wondrous war machines. For the Great Bastion is the shield that protects Cathay from the ruinous powers of the north. And while it stands strong, so too does Cathay prosper. And as you can see, the the Lord Selection screen and the campaign you know, selection is just better. It's, it's so much better than Warhammer 2. It's not a huge line of millions of lords. Now you just you just click on the, the race you want to play as, and then you click on the Lord. Isn't that better? Yes, that's the answer. It it's just fact. You can't argue with it. It's just better. So, uh, faction effects. Corruption minus 2. Leadership plus 10% when fighting against Demons of Chaos. Ammunition plus 20% for missile units. And Lord effects minus 50% for missile infantry units. Which is an obscene discount. It really is. And harmony plus 3 yin, which means something. We'll get to that. Also, uh, for all the preview footage that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be playing it on normal and normal. Because I think that's representative of, of the sort of default... Um, experience and of course no one's had hands on with this yet so I'm not going to crank up the difficulty and give a, a sort of a false you know sense of uh, of, of the, the game essentially you know this is going to be what most people are playing at as a normal difficulty is obviously what it's balanced for right it's the normal one so that's what I'm going to be doing for the preview and then later we can you know crank up the difficulty and, and um, I can impress you all with my mad skills <laughs> you know I'm not here to show off anyway so let's start the campaign Oh, after this bit too. There's more intro. There's a lot of intro. Uh, there's a cutscene after this as well. So Grand Cathay is the land of the Celestial Dragon Emperor. Before the world was blighted by chaos, the Celestial Dragon learned how to take human form. To aid his rule, he took a mate, the Moon Dragon. And they had nine children who became noble rulers of Cathay's many provinces. Of the nine, four have been lost to time and enmity. Miao Yin, the Storm Dragon, was the firstborn. Given the honour of ruling the northern provinces and charged with Cathay's defence as commander of the Great Bastion, but the predations of chaos grow, the Bastion is under strain. The power of a god may aid in securing Cathay's borders. Perhaps there is an opportunity to lure the Storm Dragon into the chaos realms? I travel east to gain an audience. Grand Cathay, a vast empire to the east, ruled by powerful creatures, dragons, who can inhabit human form. You are gravely mistaken. We have no interest in a mere god's power. No interest in power to use against the forces of chaos? I am Yao Yi, the Storm Dragon, older than the gods themselves. You are here for a greater purpose. This map shows the energy of all things. There should be harmony, but the world is unbalanced. My younger sister, Shen Tzu, bringer of light and hope. She ventured beyond the Norskan mountains, but was lost. Without her, without her light, darkness prevails, and our family has no comfort. Though I feel your loss, the Tome of Fates provides no insight to your sister's whereabouts. Ursa knows he witnessed her fate. Then why does he not tell you, Iron Dragon? There is mistrust between dragons and gods. If we save Ursa, he will tell us how to find Shen Tzu. Let me serve you, mighty dragons. I can reach Ursa lead you to him before it's too late for one drop of his blood your destiny is to guide us the armies of Cathay must breach the maelstrom and march into chaos balance will be restored to the world when Shen Tzu is returned to you. Our 
goal is clear. To find the lost sister, we must hear the God Bear's testament before he passes into myth. So I love this as a setup because uh, the, the dragons of Cathay are older than the gods. They see themselves as, you know, their superiors, essentially. They think the gods are a silly business. Um, they're the hobbies of mortals. So the idea of them not really caring about getting the power of a god, why would they need the power of a god? They have the power of dragons, right? So the fact that it's it's literally Urson was a witness to, um, <laughs> to what happened to their sister, I think makes a lot of sense. It's, it's something more on their level. Uh, of interest. It's, yes, we're interested in what happened to our sister, but, you know, whatever. You can die in a hole. Who cares? Like, we don't need your power. We have power. We are dragons. I love it. It's written so cocky. I am the anointed guardian of the great bastion. Any breach brings great dishonor upon me. So prove your worth, mortal. Yes, great matriarch. There is indeed a rupture in the great bastion. The forces of Tinch invade through the ruins of the Snake Gate and have taken the Terracotta Graveyard. Further along, the Bastion remains under threat from the Changer's forces, or, as you know him, the dread power Qian Chi. Yet, despite the enemy assaults, there remain brave defenders ever loyal to you. Bolster them, and they will gladly confederate with a revered dragon. That's the Wuxing Compass. You way. will Remember need that. such allies, for it is on the other side of the wall where the threat is strongest. The eternal siege continues, for the dark powers are never sated. And there, the orchestrator of this woe, Kairos Fateweaver. Face this demonic oracle, lest he bring down the Bastion. Fate Weaver is insidious, and the invasion is only part of his plan. Rebellion festers in Nanyang's minds under the Changer's malign influence. Punishment must be swift to reinforce your authority. Before we can hope to take the fight into the Chaos Realms themselves, we must bring harmony back to Grand Cathay. There is much to do. My siblings conspire. Good stuff. So you don't need to tell me how this plays. Get out of here, okay? I'm, I've got that covered. I'm going to tell people how that this plays. So uh, under the malign influence of Qian Chi or Xinj to the layman, uh, rebels from the minds of Nanyang approach with hostile hearts. They are fate weavers' puppets to ensure strife as he attacks through the Great Bastion. Not that this exonerates such disobedience. They must face the dragon's wrath. And uh, we, for the privilege, we will get an Astromancer. This is a Lord of Heavens caster. Very nice to have, because although Miao Yin is a caster lord as well, she's mostly going to be in dragon form, and that means that she doesn't have access to a lot of her spells a lot of the time. You can't cast all your spells when you're a dragon, so uh, we'll be relying on the other spell caster to do most of the spell of casting. The so, before we get into all of the multitude of different uh, features, that Cathay brings, we're going to get into a combat, okay? We're going to get into a fight and we're going to have a look at the units we start with and, um, and a look at the new maps, because the, the maps are stunning. A big upgrade. And here we are on the new maps that are stunning. So uh, we've got these beautiful little rice paddies and things. These beautiful uh, little farming areas with these gorgeous lanterns, these amazing mountains. The mist effects in this game are incredible. The lighting, the glare, the, the cherry blossom trees, just the trees in general. Uh, Warhammer 2 had an issue with trees looking a bit like weird and pixely and awkward. Here they look a lot smoother and natural and don't stand out against the sky. The water effects so much better. All these little intricate buildings, just beautiful little scenery. Uh, there's little sky temples up on the mountains perched atop a lot of these look here, here as well. And there's a little gondola, you know, little details like that. Absolutely stunning. Floating rocks because Warhammer um, is just brilliant. So, our units. Hello there, Peasant Long Spearman. So I do love the sort of um, helmet, sort of, uh, what do you call them, like a rice paddy hat thing hybrid. I think it's very cool. I think they look really stylish. I love the ropes holding them all together. Very interesting. Love the natural fabrics. <laughs> and uh, here we have Jade Warriors. So these are the kind of state troops 
of Cathay. I think they look fantastic. So we've got a couple units of them. We have the Celestial Dragon Guard, who are the elite of Cathay. I mean, well, I say elite, they're still only human. So, you yeah, know. They make do, though. Uh, and they're also very good, just generally. Really good armor at 95. And they have bronze shields, which is really good for a halberd unit with that armor piercing, the anti large. Really good units. Really good. Can be very reliable. We'll have a lot of them. And also, they have their melee, uh, sorry, their ranged equivalent to uh, to the melee uh, dragon guard. There's a dragon crossbowman as well. These guys are great. Armor piercing crossbow bolts. And uh, yeah, good armor as well. And shielded as well. And not bad in melee for ranged units. I mean, 26 and 32, and unbuffed. We haven't we haven't put any points into anything yet, um, you know, in campaign skills. So really good unit, really good unit. Also, you'll notice down here, this is a yin unit. So all the ranged units are yin units, and all the melee units are yang units. And if you have a yin and a yang next to each other, then they'll be in harmony, and you'll see it gives them little bonuses. So actually, reload skill if uh, this has a melee unit nearby. And uh, for, for these other units, if we have a look here, you can see they get leadership and melee defense. Really good. So it uh, really helps to have a balanced army. Uh, oh, and we have um, the, the peasant archers as well. So same same as the other peasants. And Miao Yin here being really boring. This is her in boring mode. Her with, like, lightning fists. That's when she's being boring. That's how cool she is. Okay? She's a cool dragon. Oh, look at her go. Yeah, again, super boring. This is nothing. This is nothing. <laughs> so we also over here have uh, peasant horsemen as well. Really good to have them for starters. And uh, over here we have a sky junk, which is a pretty cool thing. It's the slowest thing in the world. Very vulnerable to missile fire because if you end up putting it in a bad spot, you're not going to be able to get out of that spot with its 30 speed and the fact it's gigantic and you know you can't hide it behind a rock or anything. <clears throat> excuse me or anything. It's just in the air. It, it's a it's a sitting duck. But, it has a rocket battery on the front of it, and these crane gunners will just be shooting stuff as it flies about uh, passively, and it can drop bombs if it can ever actually maneuver to get on top of something. Uh, in defenses, it's incredible on the attack. It can be, a, you can end up putting it out of place and getting it wrecked, but uh, generally, very good. And uh, the enemy is also here. So, let's lock everyone's group, charge them in. I'll send the peasant horseman over the side and uh, Miao Yin here you can see on cooldown is a transformation of the dragon or cool mode as uh, as I've decided to call it literally just now. Also Wrath of the Storm is a nice area buffed plus 24 melee attack and immune to psychology for nearby units so when she's in human mode, um, <laughs> that's right it's a mode, she's basically a support character so she has life uh, magic as well as yin magic. So yin being a new law of magic, we can actually slow one of these guys down with yin magic. How good is that? Minus 45 speed. 45% rather. So really good stuff. But unfortunately, when she becomes a dragon, she's not going to have that luxury. So, you know, there is that. And we're about to turn her into a dragon. Alright. You can chase them down. You can chase them. And there we go. Dragon mode. It's pretty dope. So let's go mess up uh, you go over here. And uh, yeah, just stunning. Just stunning battles. The new lighting system, it just it makes everything look great. It really does. You know, it's subtle, but it's amazing how much how much of a difference lighting can make to a game. Especially a game like Total War, when you have a million people on the field. You can have a million people looking quite average, but if they're well lit. It's going to pop, you know? It's going to look fantastic. And uh, you're missing a bit there, love. Come on. Look, he's right there. I know you're a big, big gangly, a big gangly girl, but, like, he's right there. It shouldn't be a problem. She's just nuzzling him at this point. Okay, that was a bit more than a nuzzle. <laughs> that was a killer nuzzle. So, yeah, things are good. Things are good. I'm happy with this so far. I must say. Very happy with this so far. So... Let's get you up and around, because amazingly our Celestial Dragon Warriors are having difficulty in... Oh no, they're gone. <laughs> so, how are we looking? You really just want to nuzzle him, huh? Really just want to nuzzle him? I mean, it's quite cute, really. Let's, uh... There we go. Oh no, those are ours. Those are ours. She's trying. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Big slap. And there we go, he's run away. But uh, yeah, just a beautiful starting army. Really good variety of units to start with, which I, I adore. I think I think campaigns are best when you get given you know a good range of tools early. 
And also, you can see, this is slightly different. It actually just gives you a list of the rewards that you got, which is brilliant. This is such a simple thing to add, but it means a lot. It really does. You don't have to wait for all of this stuff to, you know, show up. You can just see your treasury, your experience, and any items you got. I love it. Absolutely adore it. So, uh, replenishment, we don't really need to do because we only lost three guys. So, let's go with pardoning the captives. I know that the uh, that Lord Magistrate was under the influence of uh, Qian Chi, but it doesn't mean that all of his, uh, all of his, you know, all the peasants were. So, I'll let him go. I'll let him go. I'm benevolent. At least I want people to think I am. So, under the malign influence of Qian Chi, oh yes, we, we did that. And then we got the, the Astromancer. We got a Channeling Staff, which I think I'll give to the Astromancer, honestly. Because he's not going to be in dragon form. So you don't have to worry about that. So they died. And next up, send your new hero to join your army. That's a very straightforward mission. Next up, recruit two units. Which just happens to be our recruitment capacity right now. And restore... The balance of harmony. Cathayan factions should strive to maintain stability between the forces of yin and yang. Achieving balance leads to rewards, whilst extreme imbalances can cause unrest and other debilitating effects. Which we will see very shortly. So yeah, get in that army so we can take that off, please. Thank you. And now, if you look up here, harmony at the top of the screen. So this um, will have a breakdown. So characters, events, buildings, and technology are the things that affect your harmony. Everything is, is measured from yin to yang, and uh, you want to have an equal amount of both, and then you'll be in harmony. And you can see the current effects. We're getting slightly cheaper construction cost for yang, slightly more income from yang buildings, 10%, but yin buildings, minus 15% income from them, and we're losing six control, which is public order. They they've seem to have replaced uh, the term public order with control across the board. They had for Protonia, you know, way back when, but now that's just uh, applies across the board. So, you know, bear that in mind. That's just public order. But you can see the greyed out bonuses here when you're in harmony, when yin and yang are equal. Diplomatic relations are plus 20 with Cathay. Construction cost minus 20% for all buildings. Growth plus 40. Income from yang and yin buildings go up by 25%. You get plus 8 control. Corruption minus 5 for all provinces. And you get an army ability. Ancestral warriors is where you can summon a bunch of ghost halberds to fight people. It's awesome. So, really good stuff, but you've got to keep in balance, and that's difficult. But what is nice, because it's only characters, events, buildings, and technology, you don't have to worry too much about your uh, army composition with regards to this thing. You can still build armies how you want, you don't have to keep literally everything in balance. Just those four things. Which is already a bit of a chore, but it is a lot of fun when, uh, when it pans out. You do, feel, you do feel like a big man when, uh, when it all works out. Also, Iron Hail Gunners are very, very cool, and we're getting them half uh, half upkeep, thanks to, thanks to our faction, uh, sorry, our Lord Perk. So, yeah, we're going to recruit two of those. They're like uh, hand cannons, you know, for the Vampire Coast, so incredibly powerful, really, like, punchy missile attacks, but very short range and a bad firing arc, so you really need to be right in front of the enemy. So they're great on the defense, where you can let the enemy come to you, but on the attack, they're incredibly finicky. Incredibly rewarding when it works out, though, so I really enjoy using them. Nungao. So, the unique building in Nungao is very cool. It's the ninth wall. Of the nine concentric walls that circle Nungao, the ninth wall is the tallest and most deadly. Not that any enemy has ever breached the others. Plus six control, plus 500 defensive supplies, which is a thing that we'll be able to look at soon. Attrition, minus 40% when under siege. Melee defense, plus 10 when under siege for local armies. And melee defense, plus six when defending for all armies. That's a big bonus. That is a big old bonus. Also, ammunition plus 30% during siege battles for all armies. How cool is that? Defense battles, specifically. But uh, obviously that's a tier 5 thing, so we're not going to get that yet. Uh, we could get the clay pit. Uh, but first, I need to look at these things. I might actually go for the garrison initially. So you'll notice there are two buildings, right? There's a yang and a yin building. So that doesn't apply to any of the recruitment buildings. Recruitment, you can build whatever you like. It doesn't want to discourage you from you know, from building those buildings. They want you to just be able to get any of these and recruit what you want without having to worry about the balance. But garrison buildings, only in major settlements, by the way, the garrison buildings, there's a generic one that doesn't affect harmony. But in major settlements, this is something you have to take into account. So at the moment, we are Yin 4. So let's go with the Yang building. So we're going to get the Yang building, which has mostly uh, melee focused units in the garrison. So we're going to get those ramparts built. And the same applies, if I show you quickly, to all of the economic buildings. They come in pairs, which will differ slightly. You can only build one, and it doesn't let you build the other. So for each of these pairs, you can only have one 
uh, in each settlement. So you've got to pick wisely between getting harmony balanced or just getting the bonus you want, because they do differ slightly. Here you can see growth plus 30, construction costs goes down for all buildings, but here it puts up income from all buildings while putting up growth. These two are income related. One puts up income a lot, one puts it up quite a bit, but also adds income from trade faction wide. This one adds control and recruit rank for peasants. This one is control, but less control, but it puts up casualty replenishment rate and recruitment cost goes down for peasants. So they all have slightly different bonuses. So it's it's interesting to try and balance, you know, your needs with, with harmony and all the rest of it. It's a fun mechanic. It makes building buildings actually something you think about rather than just following a template. Uh, which is something that in Warhammer 2 I was always doing. So, uh, we're, we're yin, right? We are yin. We are indeed yin. Because of course with a, with a ranged one. With the one with all the Ready good ranged defend. stuff. So, technology. This also has that balance. So again, we're going to go with some yang stuff, I think. So, uh, peasant um, leadership is a bit rubbish. But then we can get to the vigor loss reduction for jade warriors. And we can have a lot of jade warriors throughout the whole of this campaign. So that's something we're going to want. If you go straight down the middle of the tech tree, you can see you go straight down the middle. These are all neutral. These are all in harmony already. But if you go to any at the top, it's all yang. Any at the bottom, it's yin. And these will affect your harmony, which you can see on the screen, which is really convenient to be able to just see that and see where you stand without having to go out of the menu and look at the top. So some really good stuff there. Next up, we have a caravan to dispatch. So here we have a starting uh, caravan crew here. And uh, you know what? You can get rid of that. So this is the ivory road mechanic. So here you can see we do have these routes out, but we haven't explored a lot of the map yet. So we can't see all of the routes through the world. We can only see our destinations. And uh, I should explain the world map as well while we're here. This little basin at the top, all of that, that's the realms of chaos. The circle around that, well, semicircle, uh, is the uh, chaos wastes. And so over here, right, you can see this is this is where we are. This is where we are. The Great Bastion goes up this way, which technically is in the north. It covers the northern border of Cathay, which, I mean, that doesn't look very northern. It's to the left, not up. You know, you know, you know how this works. But that's because this is sort of a cross-section of the top of the globe. So it's a distorted view. So we have Cathay, the Mountains of Morn, where the ogres live. Uh, this is the Dark Lands, where you'd expect uh, Chaos Dwarfs to be if they existed, but they don't. Shh. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> People will get mad if they think they don't exist. Also here, we have the World's Edge Mountains. This mountain range is Norska. This is the Empire. This is Kislev. In fact, this is Eringrad right here. There's uh, there's Altdorf. There's Marienburg. Here's the Pale Sisters and Grey Mountains. And Bretonia would be beyond that. So that's the map. That's the map, guys. That's how that works. And now we need to pick where we're going. So I think we're going to go to possibly Eringrad. Uh, or all the way to Marienburg. Or oh, actually, it looks like we can get more money if we go to Sylvania today. So we're going to go to Sylvania to trade, which is novel. And we're going to take a bunch of money. You can see the more you know cargo you take, up to a thousand currently. We can put that up with skill points later. Um, the more money you take, the more money you're going to get when you uh, sell the cargo. So we're going to try to go to Sylvania. So we can dispatch that. You can see we have the army down here. We can't recruit units, but events will happen which will let us recruit units and um, sometimes feed our units to ogres that, to you know, as a toll. Uh, all sorts of random events can occur. And we can even get units that don't even exist within our faction. Like here, we have a bunch of ogre mercenaries, which, you know, fine, ogre mercenaries, that's that's not that unusual, but you can get things like um, high elf nobles, uh, empire captains, uh, certain state troops from the empire as well can show up in these armies. So you get all sorts of stuff happen with these armies. So you get really good variety. And if they do get stopped and you do decide that you want these guys to fight their way through, uh, you know, an ogre barricade or an ambush, or if they get attacked on the campaign map, then you fight that battle. You can fight it if you want. So you get to use a very diverse, um, you know, these very diverse armies against very diverse enemies across the map, even if you are just going to turtle at home. So I think it's really cool. So we're going to dispatch that to Castle Drakenhof. And that is most of the mechanics. Let's move on. And we did manage to recruit two units. We're pretty good like that. We're pretty talented. So the minds of Nanyang are held by rebel lords under the sway of Qian Chi. Their continued existence defiles Cathay and risks further sedition in the region. They must be eliminated. We will get a potion of foolhardiness for their switches. Eh, fine, I guess. It's okay. I. These are random. 
These are random, by the way. Sometimes you get really good items, sometimes you get the potion of foolhardiness. So, it's fine. Better than nothing. Um, we're going to attack this anyway, so it's cool. So, we're going to attack. In you go. And uh, close victory, I mean, it, medium casualties. If we auto-resolve, we are going to lose a unit. It does have auto-resolve previews, so if you hover over auto-resolve, something will flash red if it's going to die. Um, so, you know, standard. It got implemented in Total War Warhammer 2 towards the end of its uh, life cycle, and they have it in here too, which is lovely. Uh, so we are going to fight this because I want to show the campaign, you know, the, the battle map for minor settlements, because minor settlement battles exist now. And also takes into account this new system with defensive supplies. We saw we saw a building of ours that gave bonus defensive supplies. These are going to be what you spend on barricades and towers. They're going to help you fight, and uh, we'll see where those are positioned, and you'll see them in action um, now. And here we are. Check it out. How cool is this? Very. That's the answer. Again, no discussion. It's very cool. If you disagree, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, <laughs> this. I love the. I love the maps. I love the maps. And the map variety is really good too. But you can see here, uh, there's plenty of ways to get in, and they all have different uh, advantages and disadvantages. And you'll see that there are these little uh, minor supply locations. The longer the enemy have these, the more supplies they're going to have generated, and that means they can deploy more barricades and, and better towers that can shoot at you and, and all sorts of things. Um, but also, if you capture them, any of these lines going out here, you see all those red lines, they all connect to nodes where stuff could be built. If you take over that point, all of those buildings get destroyed because you've taken over the point that is in control of those, uh, those areas. So you really want to take these nodes to deny them uh, an area to build in and also to deny them the resources to build stuff elsewhere. So there is reason to sort of attack in multiple areas. But if you attack in one place, then it's, you know, you've got sort of more control and, and you have all your resources at hand. So there's pros and cons. But what I am going to do is uh, we're going to put our horsemen in some trees over there and we're going to move these guys over here. And you'll notice a formation happens. Check it out. If you just select all your units and you drag them, it actually puts the ranged units behind. Good, isn't it? Pretty handy. Pretty handy. Oh, and you can change those formations as well. As uh, there's different um, options here, you can you can set the different formations. Only you know who goes in front, but it's it's enough. It's enough just to have a shortcut there. You can still group your units and, and have them deployed how you want. You know, outside of uh, the sort of auto formation. You know, you can still set it yourself. And also, what's really nice is it remembers the formations that you put your guys in. So next time we deploy, it'll deploy our units like this on the map. Which isn't necessarily a good thing, but, you know, because this is very much suited to this. But if we're doing similar battles time and time again, then it just saves you a lot of time over the course of a campaign. It's really wonderful. So you're going to go over there. Uh, you just sort of stay out of the way. We're going to push our Jade Warriors up in the front and try and create space for our Iron Hail Gunners to fill up this uh, area with, with lead, basically. And we'll have these guys against the wall because they've got a nice firing arc because they're archers and that's how archers work. So, you know. Uh, also, we're going to move up with... I guess everyone can move up a little bit. We're going to move our balloon up here. Our sky junk. There, there are archers up there, which I'll have to worry about a bit. But we're going to try and move over here, and we can shoot across. Uh, so you guys, start shooting these peasant archers, please. Luckily, thanks to our celestial dragon crossbowmen, we should be able to trade incredibly effectively. <laughs> it looks like they're going for for our lord anyway, which isn't the best target, so that's nice. And here you can see, in 67 seconds, they would have built this tower. You can shoot at it with archers. Uh, flying units can engage it in melee, so there are ways to deal with it, which is rather nice. And also, they've built a barricade already. So barricades are a bit finicky to attack sometimes, but you can shoot at them with your archers and and, uh, and uh, just attack them in melee, like you would sort of a gate or something, which is rather nice. Works out rather well. But yeah, they can be a bit finicky, especially if they're being defended, because occasionally units will jump over like this, <laughs> like they're doing here. And then if I say, attack these Jade Warriors, your units will try and attack from behind, so they'll take a weird way around. Because there's some units over here, and they'll decide to attack them, not them. It's odd. Pathfinding could be a bit weird with it. But once you're used to it, and you sort of expect that, then you, you work around it. Um, hopefully they'll, you know, they'll tweak it a bit before release. It is still a month out. But uh, it is something to to bear in mind. It is something to bear in mind. It can be a little bit, um, uh, I guess, unintuitive sometimes. 
if you just give an order to attack and call it a day. Alright, you can attack them then. That's almost built. Which, uh, in that case... I might just, uh, I might just shoot that with my Iron Hail Gunners. You know what, I'm going to shoot it with everything. Because I want this tower destroyed. And I guess it's time for Dragon Mode. Let's, um, let's heal these guys. Let's just get a heal on them before I turn into a dragon. Oh, and we do need to give that channeling staff to our other uh, friend here. I think Yutan needs that. So I'll deal with them. And, ooh, good. You can start shooting them. Can you, can you reach that? Hard to say if you have line of sight here. Yeah, well, it doesn't, doesn't feel like it. But I feel like we're a bit of a sitting duck here. The balloon is so slow that it it could be a real nightmare to uh, to get to work properly. You know what? We're going over here. Oh, no, we did shoot. We did shoot. Not bad. We missed most of those shots. Accuracy is not its forte. But if it does get a good hit, you know, if it's uh, sort of above the enemy, like I'm going to go for here and shoot down into these guys, then, yeah, it's going to do just disgusting things. How are you still going? What is going on there? I told you guys to attack the tower. The tower's there, and it's also got a timer. What is that? Why has it got a timer as well as being there? I'm confused. Build time. How, okay, I think that might be a bug. I shouldn't be able to attack it before it's actually built. But <laughs> that's okay. Again, like I said, we're a month out from release. So you can deal with that. Alright, guys. Uh, yeah, there we go. How many kills? Oh, only 79, surprisingly. Only 79. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> that's pretty good, though, isn't it? Sure is. Alright, let's get Hemonic Convergence on these guys, because they're starting to... Uh, suffer a little bit, start to take a bit of damage. You guys can move up now. And, uh, yeah, you guys, I guess, shoot those peasant uh, long spearmen, huh? There are some Jade Warriors there, so we do have Jade Warriors versus Jade Warriors, but mine are buffed. So. Alright, come on, mate. Look, those, those are ours. Be careful. Just, he's not very careful. Anyway, uh, so this is going well. Do you want to turn around? Maybe you can get some shots into those peasants. Uh, so really huge amount of kills already to say that it was just one unit sort of wandered in uh, to range a bit. But look at that, 72 kills and 41 kills. They just mop up enemies real quick. It's real crazy. Like if they get a good line of sight, it's, um, yeah, it's game over. <laughs> it's game over for whatever they're pointed at. It's marvelous. And it's armor piercing as well. So, you know, even against some pretty good units. They will manage that. It's marvellous. So, how are things going down here? Hopefully, our gunners will have line of sight on these. Yeah, there we go. Very nice. Nicely done. I love them. I really love these units. They're really fun to use. In the late game, you're better off just spamming, um, like, celestial uh, uh, dragon archers, crossbowmen, rather. Celestial dragon crossbowmen, because they got the way better armor piercing and... They can shoot anything. They have much better range, and they got that firing arc, so you don't have to worry about getting them positioned exactly right. And um, and they have way more armor, and they have shields, so they're even better against other archers. These guys, they're short range. Just peasant archers can completely decimate these units. So you know, they're great if you get them in the right position, but they can be in the wrong position real easily. So decisive victory. Terrific. So you know, a bit of money, a bit of experience. And a city. Lovely. So the likeness of the guardian lion, perfectly graven from this most desirable of materials and imbued with its rage and power. And you'll notice it tells us how we got it, which is really nice. That's a nice little quality of life thing where you can go, oh, I got this random treat. How did I get that then? Was it random? No, it wasn't. We won a battle against Jade Warriors, so we got given this item, which I really like. I think it's really nice that it actually informs you of that. So if you are seeking out particular items, you know how to get them. So, recruit rank plus three for Jade Warriors and Jade Warriors with halberds from Yao Yi. Very useful for when we start building our army with some, some better units. So the Minds of Nanyang, yes, yes. Uh-huh. Potion of Foolhardiness. Those that drink this tincture may well be fools, but they are bold fools at that. Next up, the Gunpowder Road is a major thoroughfare of the northern provinces, allowing the artificers of Nangao to transport their wares and weapons across the empire. No part of this region should remain under rebel control. And you'll notice, you may have noticed this sooner actually, because, you know, we've had a few objectives, but it actually tells you about the objectives now. It puts them on the map. So at a glance you go, ooh, there's a mission there, and then you click it and you can see what mission it is. It's super simple, like super easy, and you can even pin them over here. 
Look, they're pinned. It's amazing. So, uh, yep, we're going to take uh, take this whole province. And what's the other one? Restore harmony. Yes, restore the balance of harmony. I believe we had a pop-up for that too, but I was... Oh, no. No, we had that last time. Never mind. Um, but yeah, brilliant. Brilliant stuff. So, Miao Yin, we're going to go Root Marcher, or else we won't be able to actually reach the next settlement. Um, it's only a 5% bonus now instead of a 10% bonus, but it's still a bit of a no-brainer, and in this campaign in particular, literally the next place we're attacking, if I didn't get this skill point now, we wouldn't be able to reach it next turn. And now that I have that skill point spent on Root Marcher, we can reach the settlement next turn. So... It makes a hell of a difference. Uh, also, we're going to get Inspiring Presence because I want to get Unyielding. Now, this is a good trend for most of the uh, of the of the sort of you know the red skill tree um, in Warhammer Three. Is most of these skills seem to be relevant in the late game as well as the early game, and this is the perfect example of it. Melee attack plus four for Peasant Long Spearmen, Celestial Dragon Guard, and Jade Warriors. That is all three tiers of infantry. So it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter where you are in the campaign. These skill points will never be wasted. And speaking of skill points being wasted, you can afford to waste 10 more skill points now <laughs> because they've moved the level cap up to 50. So your lord can get to level 50 now, which means you have more points to spend uh, by the end of the campaign, which is very nice. It's a nice, uh, a nice addition because there's a lot. There's a lot of skills. Also, speaking of skills, let's look at the more elite ones because we won't get these, you know, in this in this preview. Um, because, you know, we've got to be level 12 for these. So, minus 9 melee defense in an area around her. Uh, constantly. It's a constant effect. But only against lords and heroes. So, basically, you find a spellcaster, you turn into a dragon, you fly over it to, you know, over to it, and you nuzzle him to death. Uh, brilliant. Really good for just assassinating heroes and, and lords. Really cool stuff. So, it makes her a good assassin. I mean, not very subtle assassin. She's a dragon, but, you know, bloody useful there. Uh, also... Uh, harmonious. Diplomatic relations plus 20 for Cathay, plus 2 control, local province, and minus 1 corruption. Reinforced Bastion makes Bastion buildings 40% cheaper uh, for your faction. This puts down uh, the spell cost of a bunch of Law of Life spells and puts down their cooldown, which is a bit pointless for us because, like I said, we're, we're probably going to be in dragon mode, so most of the spells are going to be out of bounds anyway, so I probably won't bother with uh, that. It's, it's not something I tend to do. I think she's better in dragon mode, and we leave the spells to a dedicated spellcaster. Uh, Opposer of Chaos, melee defense plus 10 when fighting against Norse skilled warriors of chaos or demons of chaos, and a 4% ward save against those factions. For the whole army. This isn't for Miao Ying, this is for her army. Real big bonuses there. Also, range plus 10% for missile units, and persistent fire reload time reduction plus 20% for missile units. And finally, Eye of the Storm, which is similar to that uh, ability I already showed you, but this one works in dragon form and it's selfish. It's not a support thing, it just buffs her damage and her melee attack rather than everybody's, which I think is really cool. Really cool ability that, you know, really good if we're just using her as a, a dragon assassin monster murderer. It's going to be great. So, really cool stuff. And uh, then range discipline and wind harmony are spell and missile resistance. That's right. Spell resistance, not magic resistance. Magic resistance doesn't exist anymore. So, magic damage like Miao Yin actually causes. She has magical attacks. That won't be negated by magic resistance on characters anymore because magic resistance doesn't exist. But spells will be able to be resisted. You know, some damage from spells. So spell resistance has taken the place of magic resistance. So that way, magic damage is always a good thing, because it negates physical resist. You don't have to worry about it making you worse at attacking certain targets. So really nice, really nice uh, change that one. Also, oh, let's give you the channeling stuff. So you'll notice this is different, by the way. So you can right-click characters to actually load up the, you know, their, their menu now. You'll notice they actually have a little icon to the top, so you can swap between different characters. There will be a little scroll bar, you know, if you have too many. Uh, characters in your empire, but really nice to be able to go through that. This is good and bad. It's nice to see all your items, and you can actually tick these and salvage them, or if you have two units of the same rarity, you can fuse them and they'll create a new um, a new item, which is really interesting if you have a bunch of spare stuff. It's a really nice system, but because everything is in one giant list, and if you click on these, nothing happens. So you can't just go, oh, I have an empty slot, click on the empty slot, and then see all available um, items for that slot like you otherwise would do. So I find that is a bit annoying. So there's pros and cons with the system, but it's, you know, it's new and uh, I'm sure people get used to it. And uh, so magic items and ancillaries are all listed there. Then skills, harmonic convergence, let's go with that. 
All right, uh, yeah. is that it for the turn? I'd say it probably is. No, it's not. I want to go through diplomacy because this has changed too. Quick deal exists. Quick deal exists. So, trade agreements. Who is up for it? We can see that these two are both very happy about a trade agreement. He's partial. These guys are partial. Maybe we can convince them. It's only, you know, 0 0.3 in the negative, so not too bad. But uh, we're going to start with the Imperial Wardens. And you can see uh, they want a non-aggression pact. They're happy with military access as well. You know, so many things they're really partial to. But, of course, normally you'd want to bleed them dry. And that would take you 12 hours because you'd go, will you give me... 3,000 gold for that? How about 2,000? How about 1,500? And you do that for hours and you just keep having to rack up everything and ask again and again and again and again. It's very tedious. No one likes that. It's boring. So they have a balance offer button and now it just tells you exactly what they'll pay for it and you can accept and get on with your day. Right, then you can you can water the dog and, and, and feed the plants, you know? So, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So, I love it. <laughs> it's so much easier. It's so much quicker. The amount of times I just give up on on getting certain deals because the, the game is being a jerk. And, you know, I can't be bothered to waste all my time on it. But now you don't have to worry about it. You'll also notice uh, we don't necessarily have access to these guys. Uh, you know, they're not, they're not bordering us or anything, but we can trade with them anyway. Because they they just let you trade with people now. There aren't ridiculous restrictions. So now you're not in a position where you're like, why can't you trade? They're right there. Trade. I don't care that you can't access their capital. Like, come on. Trade with the people. You don't have those arguments with the screen anymore, okay? You don't have the neighbours knocking on your door asking if you're okay. Because, <laughs> because Kislev won't take your pots, okay? It just works. It just works now. So, real good changes there. Real good changes. There's also a bunch of other um, uh, pretty um, extravagant things. Uh, yeah, I'll pay, I'll pay the money. Mm. I'll, be, I'll be generous. Uh, there's also some other things pertaining to diplomacy that we will get to in time. So, uh, this guy will probably retreat soon. Uh, speaking of diplomacy, here's another thing about diplomacy. This guy's trespassing. We can't have that. I'll tell him to bugger off with the bugger off button. Send a warning to the trespassing faction to leave your territory at once. If they fail to leave in two rounds, you can declare war on them without having to suffer treachery penalties for breaking non-aggression pacts and trade agreements. The amount of times you'll be, you know, you'll have a treaty with someone and they just raid your territory and you have no recourse. If you declare war on them, everyone thinks that you're a, a backstabbing lunatic and, and will cancel all their deals with you. Now you don't have to worry about it. Now, now we can declare war on this guy, our good friend. Fubadgu. We can declare war on him and it, no one will mind. How great is that? I and mean, we have no deals with him, but still, we're warning him to leave and he might leave and that's a good thing. So really cool. We actually have recourse for that now. And I think that's it for the turn. Let's move on. I just realised I didn't bother recruiting anything. That was real dumb. Trespass warning ignored. They ignored me. So... You know, it kind of makes sense. Their beastmen, of course, they were going to. But it's worth trying. The fact that that's a feature now is great. So the Snake Gate. They want us to take the Snake Gate. The Snake Gate is breached and under the control of chaos. Retake the Fortress Gates, secure Grand Cathay, and maintain your honour as the Great Bastion Sentinel. Easy for you to say. Fate Weaver's minions defy lands under your protection, leaving them to fester. Risks a loss of standing with your siblings and father, the Dragon Emperor himself. Money and Sword of Strife. Brilliant. And again, Does they're all listed the yes. down here, so you can see them nice and easily. The objectives are there, so you can see them. You know, I love it. So good. So many good changes in this. You know, real good quality of life changes. Just make things so much more seamless. So here, uh, we're going to auto-resolve because, I mean, I'd love to show you more battles, but it's another Cathay settlement. It is a bit different, but there'll be a more elaborate one later, which I'd rather show you instead frankly. So money and experience and a scroll of blast, which I'm not sure if we can use that one in dragon form, but it would be quite nice to just like blast people from the sky. So we will try it, I think. Make a watch we will try it. So enemy killed, Jidang is destroyed, and blast for Miao Yin. Already equipped where I wanted it, so that's perfect. The scroll has a bound spell that when read will unleash a sharp blast of arcane light. And now we have secured the province, so I can show you the commandments. So we have control and lowering chance of plague. So every faction has uh, like a plague reduction, you know, chance reduction uh, commandment somewhere in their list of commandments, which is really useful because, you know, Nurgle is a big deal now. And it'll also help if, you know, once you're playing the big combined map, once that's released in 
I don't know however many months time that, that it'll take to get um, added to the game. You know, Pestle and Spreading Plague as well. So it's really good that everyone has a way to deal with that. So I really like that. I think that's really nice. Because it's still at a cost. It's at a cost of other, you know, more impressive uh, uh, abilities. So here we go. Income from trade faction wide. Recruitment cost down and local recruitment capacity up. Which is incredibly useful. That's the one I'll be doing first. Um, corruption. Minus five, melee defense up for local armies, and it lowers campaign movement range of enemies, which means they'll be easier to chase um, if, if they end up in your territory. You'll be able to actually get on top of them a little bit more easily, which is great. You know, really powerful thing to have, and it gives you more recourse for all the constant games of chase that you have uh, in this game. I know you've done it. I've done it. I'm always chasing people about. And uh, research rates up. So really good stuff. Uh, we're going to go with the recruitment one, though, because I will actually want to get a second army um, in a minute. Do I want one now, actually? Maybe I do. We do need more for Miao Yin, though, first. So let's get um, another couple of Iron Hail Guns. Maybe. Yeah, that'll do. And next up, take the Gunpowder Road. It, we did it. That's the one we did. So we got an Enchanted Shield. Lovely. There you go. Next up, capture two provinces, because... The game is very demanding. There's no end to this. It's just going to keep asking you to take more provinces. It's real cheeky like that. You control one province, but more land must be acquired if you want to fund a successful war machine and send out your armies to seize more territory from your enemies. I'd love Warden to, but not yet. We need to get unyielding first, so all my uh, my peasants and, and celestial guard and jade warriors are more capable. And also, this is going to be a curveball for you guys. right? Any, any sort of um, experienced... Total War Warhammer players will wonder why the hell I just got Orlan's Thunderbolt. It's because it's amazing now. It does so much damage. It will basically take like a half a unit's health off. It's amazing. Wind Blast tickles people now. No, Orlan's Thunderbolt, that's where it's at. You can also use it on top of walls. It's got good range. Um, it's great. Orlan's Thunderbolt, okay? It's my, it's my quality guarantee. Get the Thunderbolt. It is amazing. I love it. I know, I'm surprised as you are, guys. I'm as surprised as you are. But nope, it's brilliant. Uh, I'm actually going to use global recruitment as well, because I've decided that I need uh, more troops in this army in a hurry. So, this will go up to three slots next turn. We have we have plenty of Iron Hail Gunners. I guess we're going to get some more cheap rubbish. Uh, so, one thing that's quite interesting is, this time round, I got a Kral in this settlement. But it is actually random what they put here. So, um, most of the time when I play it, they actually build barracks here. So I get access to Jade Warriors. Instead they build a corral, which is actually annoying, and I'm going to get rid of that. Because I actually want this to be able to train me some Jade Warriors. I know. These guys are rude, aren't they? They sure are. And now we're getting attacked by, uh, by Hauto. Probably said that wrong. Uh, we will lose some peasants and horsemen, but I think just to expedite this a we bit, we're, we're going to have to deal with it. So let's venerate. And also, it might feel like I'm rushing. It's because I am rushing because this is a timed, you know, embargo. I can only do so much content and uh, I want to leave enough time to do just like random videos if you guys want to see anything in, in particular detail. You can harass me for it. So um, please do harass me for particular things. Okay, not factions. I'll be covering as many factions as I can, you know, afford to do. But just specific, you know, things about the game. Let me know, and uh, I'll I'll try and I'll fit things in, even if it's just like a, a talking head piece talking about the thing. Um, because yeah, all the embargoes are very strict. I have a certain amount of time, a certain amount of videos I can do, and and huge restrictions on what I can actually uh, record and talk about. So you know, bear that in mind. But months till release, there's gonna be plenty more embargoes where I can keep dropping content. So let me know what you want. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. So, caravan encounters. Hungry, hungry ones. So this is really fun. I love this. So there's a stench on the air, the unmistakable aroma of cooking bones. A band of ogres burst forth, drool dripping from their mouths. They look on hungrily at, their reti at your retinue. Their leader shouts out his demand. They'll let you pass if they can eat some of your meat. And they don't mean the cargo in the caravan. Oh dear. So these events will happen all the time and you'll get, you know, just a range of events. There's a bunch of different ones. Some you'll end up getting new recruits. Some you'll end up losing them. Some you'll end up feeding peasant archers to the blood guzzlers. Uh, and some you'll get in a fight. So, looks like it'll be okay. Uh, auto resolve will hurt these guys a lot and you can't just tell these guys to go into encamp stance and, and recover for a while. Because they're on the move. It's a caravan. They're going to end up in potentially more hostile territory. So you've got to be really careful. Um, but 
because I'm not that precious about this caravan. If it dies, it dies. Like, it's fine. You know, I'm just trying to show you a preview. We're not going to be finishing this campaign. So I'm going to auto-resolve it. So they survived. They survived. We'll be able to see much more impressive ogre battles uh, throughout this embargo. If you guys really want to see some ogre stuff, then, uh, well, I don't know. I'll, I'll just... Let me know what you want, is what I'm getting at. So, Venerate. We're going to try and get they some replenishment. A... Hopefully, they will last. So, we destroyed the the rebel lords of Nanyang. But, unfortunately, there are other rebels here. Which uh, are basically designed to be our twin brothers. Who starts down here. Um, our twin brothers, sort of initial enemy. But, while well, we're in the neighbourhood, right? So, regiments or mobs that fly the Razor Standard will slice through enemy armour and penetrate their opponent's flesh far easier. Lovely. Isn't that nice? Next up, they're going to give us another Razor Standard, apparently, if we recruit 20 units. Wars rage the length and breadth of this land. In such times, only the strong can hope to survive. Build your forces in order to meet the threats that face you. I mean, I'll try my best. I'll try my best. The Mines of Nanyang. Let's go ahead and build the training camp so we can get some Jade Warriors. Because we do want to take the Snake Gate. We do want to take it. We absolutely do. Ah, and once we get this uh, level up for the Caravan Master, really nice stuff. Caravan Master is a separate um, Lord type. So he's basically based on the Lord Magistrate. He has much of the same abilities. All these things are the same as the Lord Magistrate. Uh, Lord, you know, pick. But he has some unique things down here. Uh, and up here, actually, are slightly unique. Um, but Local Guides makes the Caravan Shortcut event cheaper. There are Caravan Shortcut events. <laughs> That's one of the events that you can have. Wayfinders lowers the chance of him being ambushed. So, ambush events, essentially. Um, Hidden Stores gives replenishment rate bonuses and lowers the amount of attrition he'll suffer. Which, again, very useful, because you can't just put him in a camp stance for a few turns and have him carry on. Nope, you really need to be able to withstand that sort of thing. Sale value of his cargo, you can increase up to uh, 30%. You can also put up cargo capacity. Obviously, cargo capacity means you're having to put more money into it when you ship them off, but you'll get much bigger returns. So, you know, it's good, provided they survive. <laughs> so, yeah, some really good bonuses there. Also puts up caravan shortcut um, events, you know, much cheaper, and a chance of a double move. You can get up to 10%, so it's a chance they'll move two nodes in one go. Also, maximum capacity up and... Uh, <laughs> cheaper extortion. They'll be extorted for cheaper, so that's fun. And these are just um, general uh, activatable buffs, similar to Stand Your Ground, but with a range of effects like melee attack, melee defense, or reload skill and accuracy. And uh, there's a passive for reload skill and melee defense as well. So some pretty good stuff. Uh, we'll give him... Oh, I don't know. Uh, let's go with... I'm actually going to go with Inspiring Presence. I'm not going to go for any of the unique ones. I want to make sure that his troops are going to be as good as possible. So we're going to go with the red line for now. Not that we're going to get particularly far, but that's, you know, that's what I'm going with first. Uh, so now we have the compass selection. So the Wuxing compass, I pointed that out up in uh, Wei Jin, in, the, in the, the flyby at the start of the campaign. So here, wherever we point to... Right, with the compass, that will basically fill up the bar that we're pointing to. All the ones that we're not pointing to will slowly degrade over time, and we will have uh, the, the ones that are lit up, these bonuses, are what we are getting as a result of how full the bar is. But, in addition to these bonuses, these passive bonuses, you get these active bonuses as well. So, this is the one I'm going to go with because I want to, you know, bolster this passive growth bonus to uh, plus 15 per region in Cathay, which is rather impressive. Um, and we want income from buildings and a chance of winds of magic increasing its strength. So we're going to point this way. You'll see this is now on the rise, and the other two are diminishing. Uh, Dragon Emperor's Wrath is a really interesting one, though, because this little button becomes activatable when you fill this up, and that will actually cause attrition for any units that are outside the Great Bastion um, in the, you know, just in this little area, basically. Any of the ones just outside. Uh, everything in here will suffer attrition. And that relates to this bar here. Great Bastion Threat. So right now, you can see it says, you know, which gates exist. And this bar is filling up quicker because the Snake Gate is in... Well, it's ruined. So that's adding 4% to this bar each turn. And when this goes to 100%... We get attacked. It'll be a little mini chaos invasion with a bunch of marauders and mammoths and things chasing us, um, trying to smash down the gates, which is really cool. It's a really fun um, thing. It just happens quite regularly. There are ways to lower this. Um, there are uh, commandments for the gates, a unique one that actually puts this down. 
um, by a percentage per turn, which won't stop it completely, but it'll slow it down. Generally, I like it coming as quick as possible, because there are ways to actually make upkeep much cheaper for units garrisoned here. So if you can have a bunch of really good armies here, with really cheap upkeep, if armies keep smashing against the walls, you just farm them for money and experience. You end up with these amazing lords keeping this place safe. It, it's really fun to have all these siege battles taking place. It's a really fun dynamic. But, of course, them invading before we actually secure the, the gates probably isn't the best thing in the world, which is why we will need to build another army. But, we are kind of running out of time. Um, and I think I've gone through all the mechanics, uh, all the unique mechanics for uh, this campaign. Um, not the main story stuff, which I'll cover in another video, because uh, usually the the story, the main story, you'll see, notice this stuff is all like locked. This stuff will unlock at around turn like 30 or 40, and the story will sort of begin. I'm not going to play another, you know, I'm not going to keep playing until we get to that turn on this campaign. I'll skip to that and, and show you that. Uh, somewhere else. So, I think I've shown you all the unique mechanics, but I absolutely Favorite adore uh, this campaign. I've had a lot of fun with it. Um, and, yeah, Miao Yin is a really cool character. And Cathay is a really interesting place to explore. You know, brand new to Warhammer. It's, it's, it's really amazing. And the details of the campaign map, I haven't even talked about the campaign map. You know, it's rendered totally different. And the, look at all the water and everything. It just looks stunning. These terracotta sentinels guarding everywhere. And the uh, the terracotta graveyard, you just have these wrecks knocking around. I mean, there's a Zinch army over here. We'll see some Zinch stuff at some point, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But like I said, uh, embargoes, I'm so restricted on times and what I can show, and I want to show you a range of things. So I won't be getting stuck into a full campaign yet. Um, probably not for a while, in fact. But let me know what you guys want, and it'll probably be when um, I'll start a full campaign, probably when the, you know, all the limitations are removed, you know, in the final sort of week before release, and I can just do as much content as, as I'm able to, right? Uh, so let me know what campaigns you want to see. I'm sure you'll change your mind 20 times by the end. There is so much stuff left to see. So let me know particular aspects you want to see. If you think I've missed anything, uh, let me know. Any quality of life changes you want to hear about, any questions, let me know. I'll try and answer stuff. I'll try and make videos to, you know, cover more complex things. And we're gonna wing it, guys. We're gonna wing it, okay? I want you guys to tell me how to do my job. <laughs> because that way, I will do the best job for you. Um, and it takes the pressure off a bit. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot going on right now. There's a lot to cover. So, um, it would help if you guys could chime in with your thoughts. So, uh, absolutely love you all. You're brilliant. Keep being brilliant. Uh, by comment, liking, and subscribing. And if you are looking to buy Warhammer 3, then you can buy them with the affiliate links or uh, nexus.gg slash Janet. The links are down below and I'll get a kickback and um, and that would be great, you know, to get rewarded for all my hard work. Eh? Wouldn't that be nice? So, I'll see you in the next one. Um, so excited to be finally showing you this and I hope you enjoy the next month of content. It's going to be wild. See you again soon. Laters.